Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a airbrush step-by-step. -step. Now, word of warning, this video is gonna be really, really long guys, probably about two hours, but I'm gonna take you through a full step-by-step -step on the piece of artwork that we've got here. We are gonna make some changes to this along the way. There'll be some different colors dropping in, but only one color will be dropped in. So if you wanna join me on this step-by-step, -step, the things you are gonna need to complete this piece is a reference piece of artwork like what I've got on the screen. If you're working from the screen, I just plug in a USB into the back, nice and simple, and we've got the artwork. The paper that we're gonna be using, I've got this one. You can get this from the works. It's a mixed media. It's just like a standard paper, slightly textured, but it's great for doing some pieces of artwork on. If you caught the video I done yesterday on Wonder Woman, I used this same paper for the Wonder Woman portrait. You can't do scratch back techniques or eraser techniques on this, so it's just straight in airbrush textures and things like that. So this piece is quite advanced, but if you just want to come along for the ride and watch some more paint piece of artwork, stay tuned guys. So I'm going to need some paper. As I say, if you're working from a reference and you've got your hands to a projector, you can project this image up as I've done here. I've stood in the shadow and I've penciled out round the image. So basically to give it a bit of a line outline so we can work from. So nice and straightforward. You can print your picture off. If you want to get your image across, you could print it on A3 or A4. You can do this various ways. You could cut out the shapes, sockets for the eyes on, on multiple pieces of artwork, and you could do loads and loads of stencils, and you could cut out all the intricate pieces, lay them onto your work, spray through them, and do it that way. But the way I'm doing it is I've projected it up, so I've got a pencil outline. So if you want to join me in this way of doing it, you could print the piece of paper out, flip the piece of paper over, put a load of pencil on the back, put it onto your paper and then draw over the image. So you'd be penciling over your printed out piece of artwork and then when you move it away, you'll get the pencil outline like we've got on this piece of paper here. So you can do it that way if you've not got a projector, but you've got hands to a printer. I've not got a printer, but I've got a projector, so I always go this sort of way. So paint wise, we're going to be mixing a bit of paint for this. So there's going to be three colours that we're going to be using. We're going to use a black, a white and a blue. I've got the blue in golden, so I've got the high flow medium so I can make that transparent. And I'm using Comart for this one. So I've got a bottle of black, opaque and white. And we're going to mix a bit of grey scale up and just knock it back. So it's a little bit of grey scale and then we're going to do the rose in blue. We're going to dust a little bit of blue around the sides of the face just to highlight it and make it pop, but the rest will be grayscale. Um, airbrush wise today, I'm using the Iwata Takuma Eclipse. You can use any airbrush. You could use the Creos, any other Iwata. You don't exactly need a full on detail brush to do this. We're not going full on photorealistic as this picture isn't. I'm going to change the hair because my hair pattern freehand free hand will be different to what it is on the picture, but we will get this looking like what we're doing. So first steps are to mix a little bit of paint. I'll take you through that bit. Then we'll hook up the airline. I'll talk through air pressures, what we're going to use. Lighting, if you are working from an easel, get your light source from above guys. So when you're working, you cast your shadows below where you're painting, makes it a little bit easier. Cleaning wise, you'll see me running through and I'll talk you through cleaning stages as we go along. Cotton buds, I've got some thinner, I've got some water and that's all I'll use for cleaning. Paper kitchen towel, nice and easy. So yeah, I'll get sort of set up, get the compressor on and I'll see you in a minute. Right, put the bins on because I can't see them. So we're gonna mix a little bit of gray up, nice simple. Get your black and we're gonna go a few drops in there. So you've got a little bit of black in there and you wanna be making, pick sort of the lightest color on the picture. So something around sort of this sort of tone. You've not gotta be specific. As I say, this is a demo piece. So we're just gonna mix. I'll just sometimes use a cotton bud, nice and simple. Mix a very light gray up. 
with this com art black you can tend to when you spray it down it doesn't go absolute jet black opaque i find it's quite a sort of like light gray like a dark gray say when you spray it so you can get away with just using that and just putting light coats down but we're just going to go for a light gray nice and simple and we've mixed one in there that will do if we need it lighter we'll just chuck a bit more white in it as we go along so we've got a bit of white mixed we shall mix a bit of the blue so we've gone for the golden now and advised guys always keep the tips of your bottles clean I don't you should do really so a little bit of the high flow medium in there nice and simple and we'll drop a little bit of water in as well just basically thinning the consistency down so you can spray it we'll check that when we come to spray it but we've got a transparent blue now and we can really thin that down so it's near enough light see pure see through when we make, when we've uh, come to spray it so we've got a blue we've got a gray that will do for now. If we want to need to mix anything, we'll just mix them in as we go along. So we've got a light grey, a blue, we've got the white to hand and the black. I've dropped a little bit of masking tape around this picture just to keep the overspray to a minimum around here and then we can always chop that out to the edge of the outer part of the masking. When we've finished, you've got a blank piece. It's pretty handy to have a blank piece either side. So as you're spraying, you need to do a bit of cleaning, test your colours. You can always go to the side of your piece of paper and just spray on the side, nice and simple. So airbrush, which is still probably dirty from yesterday's painting. I'm using the Takumi Eclipse. Take the crown cap off. And this is quite a bit dirty, so usually just drop a little bit of thinners in there, get a cotton bud, clean round in the cup, and then just sort of blast through and clean with a cotton bud. And then when I've done that, just a drop of water, just blast it through nice and simple try and keep your brush clean throughout your piece of artwork pause now and again you'll see me in this live picture i'll just be like putting the brush to the side giving it a clean things like that so it's nice and easy so we're going to test this gray see what it's like Now we could go a little bit lighter on that because that is quite dark. You could probably use that one, we could mix another one and then use that for another tone in the hair. So we'll save that one and just make a lighter tone up, a little bit less black. So back in with the white. And then if you've got paint left over and you've got some spare bottle, bottles, just drop your paint in to a spare bottle and you can use it again at a later date. So mix in another grey tone. Just do one more drop of black. So you're aiming just to get the lightest sort of tone in the portrait that you're working on to start off with. Go nice and light and then just start building your dark so that's how I work. Other people work differently. You can, if you was going off a black background, you'd be going in with like your whites first and you build your layers of your whites and then you can drop your darks in. But I always tend to work from a white background. That's how I've always done it. I can do both, but I just prefer going from a white background. A little bubble back.
That's a little bit better. Yeah, we'll work with that. So we'll work with that lighter tone, as you can see, and it probably near enough looks white to you there. But that's a little light gray. We've got a dark gray, we've got blue, we've got black if we need it. And I say, if we need to mix any more along the way, we can do, it's not a problem. So the picture that we're gonna work from is this one. Now, you could start this portrait at any position, guys. Now, how I'd start this is where you've got your darks here, all your like jet blacks around the face, I'd go in with the lights and start working a light pass on all this internal part of the face. Because if you go over the edges here with your light, you've not got to worry because you're eventually putting darks in. You're sort of framing everything in a dark. So any lights that go over, if you go over anywhere with your lights, you've got a dark edge to cover that up with as you're going along. Same as all here. So we'll start working these lights in the eyes. I'll usually start with the eyes. We'll work them in. Then we'll drop the nose in. We'll move down to the mouth. You'll see. I'll talk you through it as we go along. Um, there's not a specific way you've got to start painting. You could start on the rose if you wanted. You could start doing the hair. It's wherever you feel comfortable starting. But I'll usually just, you'll see me in my portraits on my time lapses. I'll just sort of buzz around and go from bit to bit. I don't tend to concentrate on one piece too long. I always move about on the picture. Actually, you can get stuck onto one thing and you could be permanently working the eye for two hours and then move on to that one. Or you could, and you can probably put too much detail into that piece, not enough in that bit or too much in that bit. Just try and make it sort of even as you go along. So I'll set up, move the camera in a little bit further so you can see, and I'll talk you through these stages. Right guys, so we've got the light grey. Now I'm gonna start dropping in these pieces around the eyes, so nice and light. There's a few textures on this picture, so I'm just gonna go in and I'm basically doing like dot passes and moving the airbrush about just to create a little bit of texture. Look at your reference, whatever's on the reference sort of bring into your picture. So just a few little textures, nothing fancy. I'm just flicking the trigger and dropping this sort of tongue where it needs to go on the portrait. And if your textures go a certain way, try and drop them in that way. So if they're going sort of that way, do the same. As I say, we're not going full on photorealism on this. Just dropping this tone in. And we can add to this if we need to. We're just gonna get this first sort of mapping out of these tones in the bottom. Drop a little bit in the eye. Dust around the eye. A little bit in that eye there. Same on this one because that part of the eye is quite light. Bit in there. Get round the eye. Little line under the eye. And just, as I say, going nice and light. That will do for the first pass on the eyes. A little bit on that part there, we'll just dust a bit in. We'll move down to the nose. Same again, because there's light textures in this nose. And you're following your reference. If you're using a projector, the more parts of the image that you can get across to your piece of paper, the better. 
and I advise, I've gone in quite hard with the pencil here. But the lighter you can go with the better because you can cover up your lines a lot easier when you're putting your artwork down. So a little bit under this nose, we're sticking with this colour. So basically just dusting in, even though this is darker under here and this is darker here, I'm just adding this tone in there. Anyway, it doesn't matter because they're going to be darker over. Bit around that nose. And there's like that shadow there, so we've dropped that in. That could probably go a little bit, that will go darker along the way. Moving on to the lips. Just follow your reference, dusting that colour in. To the bottom of the lip. And you're basically sketching with the brush. You are dropping the colour in. Nice, good little practice one this is. Good for your trigger control because you are flicking the, the trigger quite a bit. That'll do for that, that little bit under there. And under this, round this finger. All dark, so we can just dust that in dark for now. And moving on to this part of the face, that's dark in there, so we can just darken that out. And it sort of fades this way, so I'm going darker from that part of the finger down, leaving this little bit a little, a little bit lighter. Like that, a little bit in there. And there's some tiny little lines on there. Moving up to this piece, I'm gonna fade down this way. Now on the fingers, they fade sort of going up this way. So a little bit to the bottom of them fingers. Where that crease line is there, just drop a little bit of shading. And I'm just backing off with the brush a bit, moving away so it gives it more of a wider spray pattern. Down the fingers, like that, a little bit on that top of that knuckle, bottom of that finger there, along. That crease in the hand, and then we've got some shading here. A little bit more here. And round on that part of the hand, just fade that in there. As I say, this is the first pass, so this will get, once you start putting your darks in here, this will look a lot lighter. Little bit on the fingernail there. Bit on that. That was a bit dark. Hit that hard, but doesn't matter. We're going darker there, and that will be darker in that piece. Bit round the side of his face. Coming round. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can, guys, because this video will be way too long. Bit on that face coming round. We'll have a little bit in here. Just to put a bit of shape into that. Bit round the nose. And now I'm just doing dagger strokes. We'll just drop a little bit on this hair. Coming round. And do some shades in here. Same colour, just using the same first tone and follow the shape of the hair round 
like so. A little bit around here. Just want to say a big shout out to all the new subscribers that have come across to the channel and the regulars, Dean, Jesus C, you're probably watching. I will do live feeds. This feels like a live feed now, but I've got to get set up for the live feed to get these cameras sorted out. I mean, this is a bad angle for this really. It should be sort of here, but because you're working, I'm working so closely. That's as close as I can get this tripod unless I'm doing like an overhead shot that sort of looks this way. So this is the sort of closest I can get in on this, guys. So we've come round, we're just basically dusting in. You are sort of, as they say, mapping out with textures and shading. And just enjoy it guys, that's what it's about. It's all practice at the end of the day. A little bit around here. In this hairline here. A little bit there. And these are just dagger strokes, moving the brush. As I say, this hair will look completely different to what we've got on the image. I'm not copying it identical to the image. I'm going to put my own twist on it. But you'll get the idea. And that's has a soft fade around that edge. Same as here, so we'll just do a little soft fade around there. And down the bottom. A little bit over the leaves at the bottom. I'm just going to drop a real light dust in over the rows. All the way over. Right, so that's the first pass on that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next tone of grey, which is that one and we'll work that one in and then eventually we'll work black so I'm jumping back onto the eyes now I'm just going to line these eyes out nice and simple Just need a little bit of trigger control for this bit, but you'll get there. There, that's all dark there, so we're not going to worry about that. And that comes through dark there and up there. So just look at your reference where you see a dark, drop a dark. Where you see a light, keep it light. Like that, that will do on that. So that's the first sort of pass on the eye in. Move on to the next one. So as I say, keep your eye on your reference and this is dark here so we're just dusting some dark that's a line under the eye there's a little bit of that runs that way a little bit of shade in there a little bit of dusting in that eye Around a bit tighter. Line. 
and then we've got a dark here. Like that. As you can see, I've got little squiggly lines on here. So I'm looking, that's where I've like penciled it out. So I know there's like a light there. And then we've got some sort of dark textures in here. So again, just flicking with a brush. That's like a solid squiggle in there. This side the same. And just sort of work them together. Just break your image down. If you're staring at something, oh, how do I do that? Just look at the actual piece. And everything in a piece of artwork, they're just shapes. If you break the image right down, they're just dots, squiggles, lines, half moons, and it all makes a picture up. So you're basically just putting them little pieces back into the picture. Dots, squiggles. I'm basically just got the trigger on and I'm just flicking backwards and forwards to get a little bit of texture down. And this won't be exact to the picture. Just put your tweak on it, put your little twist on there and make it your own. That should be beating yourself up because you want to get it exact. Just go with how you want to put it down, guys. These textures are completely different to what's in that picture, but it will look like it. Because the minute you start beating yourself up when you've not got it to exactly the same as the picture, that's when you usually put the airbrush down and you never pick it up again. You've got to enjoy it and just put your own mark on your piece of artwork. Okay? So yeah, just make your artwork your own, get your own style. There's an artist that I follow on Instagram and I've said to him from day dot, stick to your style of painting, which he has. And the way he paints is just, the way he does his shading and the way his pictures are. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go over and look at his artwork. But I think he's absolutely blinding. And he strives, he keeps striving. Oh, I've got to make it more photo, I'm thinking, no, you're not going to make it more photorealistic. Stick to your thing because it, it's so good. texture in this nose and we'll go in again with darks we'll just keep darkening this up if you keep it light work it nice and light and just build them up. That's all you've got to do. 
I mean, this isn't sharp, really sharp, but I could really, if you was cutting this out as masks, you could make this really sharp. Every line would be sharp, but then you're going down the realistic route again, where I like to just keep all the edges sort of soft and just sharpen up a few. I mean, these lines ain't brilliant, but it will do for the purpose of the video. When it comes to doing lines and things like that, and you're having to, if you don't feel confident moving with a brush, you could always sort of mask a bit of paper out and hold it on, cut that shape, hold it on. If you've printed it out, you could, so you can really sharpen them up. But as I say, this is just like a test piece to give you a look into a piece like this on actually airbrushing it. And this paper is quite forgiving if you use this, it's nice. If this was synthetic paper and you was going for a more realistic, you would be airbrushing a lot slower than this. I guarantee it. Because you'd be tearing your pressure down for one you'd be working a lot slower. I've not even got that piece on there, so we'll pencil that piece in. Just drop a piece. That will do. As I say, this is the first pass, so we've not got to go. Full on on this. So we've gone a bit more darker here. We'll drop the first pass on the nose in. We'll do a little bit more on that. A lot of this tattoo style stuff is all sort of outlined work as well. So as I say, when you're going into these tones like this, you've not got to worry it because you're always dropping over a, a darker line around it. See this line here will eventually near enough be jet black. So I'm just dusting over that line and that just gives that face a little bit more of an, a softer edge. darker on your hair. Do a darker shading in there.
then we can use stencils and shields later on and just sharpen bits up. I was say, don't worry about going over your lines like this with different, because we're going to be adding more and more paint to this. do it's coming along so we've got that bit to put in we can put that in whenever um, we can start now going in another shade darker so now I'd get the black and then drop some more shading on these parts of the fingers and just come around drop a little bit in here Yeah, let me know in the comments guys if you want to start seeing some live feeds it'll basically be like what we're doing now it's just different stuff It's probably just covered all of that and you've missed loads. As I say, it's so awkward to get a camera, especially when you're airbrushing, you've either got one bouncing right above your head, and every time you move, you knock it and the camera goes, or well, you've got the tripod like here, and I've got this. This tripod's about, the closest I can get it is about a foot and a half away from where I'm working. It's either that or a stick a head cam on. But just drop a few tones in on this hair. Coming round, it's not going to be realistic hair, it's just. Follow the shapes. Mm. 
Right, so I think that will do for that pass. We're going to use, we're going to, we'll do the rows a bit later. We'll carry on with this piece. Right, I'm just going to drop this bit in here. So just outline this. Help that it's cold in here today. It's always nice to airbrush in a warm room because if you if you feel a little bit cold, you tend to be a little bit more shaky. As I am, and these lines aren't the best. But as this is black, if you wanted to sharpen them up, you could go in with a paint pen and you could really sharpen this face pieces of art with a black paint pen. That's not a problem because as I say, this sort of style of artwork is lined. We're out of paint. I do find the Takumi, it's a nice brush. Um, nice to work with it gets the job done oh there's that bit over there didn't put that in either something like that That'll do. And I'm adding to this now because this shading isn't on the actual image, but as I say, make it your own. We'll be dropping some blue into this as well. So we've got all that a little bit here and down. A little bit more texture in these eyes here. Here. Right, we'll move on to this piece here. I've missed out so much artwork on this. That'll do. 
we're getting there. Just feather this shading out. And here. Now what you can do is you could pop your highlights in just to keep them in place. Let's go over. with the paint pen just to drop a little bit of highlight in. Yeah, we're getting there. Right, we'll go darker. Now I've just got neat black. I 
just go back in over the eye and then where it's dark we'll drop the darks Then you're basically just going over with the next shade. I mean, you can really pop these eyes if you were doing these with like a shield. It would sharpen them right up. I'm just doing all this like sort of freehand airbrush going in and just paint it as you go along. show you what I mean by shield so if you were to come round on that piece there when you hold it up against it it just sort of sharpens it right up And I do find this Comart black is very thin. It doesn't do opaque straight away. Which isn't a bad thing because you can just keep building it up. If I was to hit this with a golden black, it it sort of instantly hits opaque quicker.
a little bit on this nose. Not the camera, and you can just you can use your seals if you need to use seals, you can just to sharpen some edges up, like so. This shield isn't the best, but. Job. It feels weird for me painting while it's quiet. I've usually got music blasting in here guys and I can get proper into it and relax a bit more. But Now we can go dark under here. To this one and then we'll go back in with the highlights again and you're basically just going over and over The same thing, but adding more layers and textures as you're going along. And just building it up. This brush could do with a clean.
that will do for that bit. Okay, here we We'll do a little pause and I'll see you in a minute. There you go guys, that's as far as we've got. I'm going to leave this episode just here, else this video is going to be way, way too long. I've got loads of editing to do on this. So that's where we've got to. Nice and simple, as I say, keep it nice and light. Start off with your first grey tone, work that in and then start building up your tones as you go along. Start getting darker. In the next episode, we'll continue with this. We'll get the rose in. We've got some light grays to drop on this. We'll get the rest of the hair done, and then we can start dropping the transparent blues down, and then we can start sharpening up pieces. We'll use some shields, drop some more highlights in, and that'll be done. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed me in part two on the Sugar School. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos on Dreadfx Custom Paint. Warm welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for all the comments, guys. Much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.